What is going on, YouTube world? We are KRT Life, KRT Life with the Y, and we is me and your sister Kat, who's operating the camera machine today because in today's super special video, we are changing the coil springs on our beloved GX470 Lexus. Coming soon, coming right now. So this is our, man, I forgot what year this thing is. What year is this? 06. Yeah, 06 uh, Lexus GX470. And I don't know if you can see right now on camera, but this thing is just sitting with the gangster lean, almost like it's gonna do 3 wheel motion like the old school like 90s gangster rap videos. Because one of the airbags on this thing has completely failed. And if you come around to this side of the car, maybe I can show it to you. So the driver's side rear bag has failed. There are only uh, bags on the rear portion of this car, and for whatever reason, Lexus decided that was a smart idea, but they all fail, and it's one of the most common and only, like I guess, like big failures that these vehicles have. So today, we're gonna go ahead and fix that, and I'm gonna go ahead and put some springs on this thing, and it should look a lot better than this awkward position that it's sitting in now. So let's get started. So to start this job off, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, chop my front wheel, which I've already done. And then I'm gonna jack the truck up and I'm going to use my little jack stands right there to support the rear uh, section of the vehicle. And I'm gonna be using my jack to, uh, I guess, uh, raise and lower the rear diff. And I've already broken one tool today, stay right there. I already broke my 21 millimeter socket trying to uh, take my, uh, my wheel bolts off because the people that put my wheels on last torque them on super super hard and uh, yeah I already have one fallen soldier for the day so let's move forward and get this job done so before we begin here are the tools that I'm going to use to do this job your results may vary my impact gun I use my multi bit um, screwdriver that has all kind of different bits on there I use this uh, long needle nose plier uh, 3 fourths crescent wrench a uh, breaker bar uh, torque wrench a regular old uh, ratchet, a uh, few different extensions, but I mean, this will represent the extensions. I use this little uh, prying tool. I use this little prying tool for the interior. I use a 12 millimeter socket, a 17 millimeter socket, and a 13 16 socket. And that was pretty much all the tools that I needed to do this job. Alright, so my wheels are off and the next step in this process will be to uh, disconnect the bottom part of these shocks. Can you see them from over there? Can you see? I'm going to disconnect the bottom of these shocks, which is right here. I believe it's a 17 millimeter bolt. Uh, you can go from this way. Yeah, the, right there, 17 there. millimeter bolt. Pull that loose. The shot will come loose. I do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to lower the uh, rear diff down. And then there's these little tabs right in there. I don't know if you can get in there and see it. I gotta pull those little, oh, uh, you can't see it? There's a small little tab in there, but I'm gonna pull that tab loose and then the uh, actual airbag should come out. Uh, everybody says this is a really, really easy job and it's a pretty quick job. And so far it has been pretty straightforward, but we're only breaking into it. But you can see right here where our um, suspension has actually been bottoming out due to the springs not keeping any air. So it's been marking right there. And uh, yeah, but it only does that like the first like, I guess like two or 30 seconds rather that you're driving because the air isn't already up unless you like that's if you just drive off if you don't just drive off and let the bags fill up then it's normal but hopefully once we get these springs up uh, in here we won't have those issues anymore so let's move on to uh, removing these shocks or loosening the shocks dislocated my I would not dislocate <laughs> I have taken a loose my shock absorber so they are now actually loose like this and now I'm going to take my jack and lower the jack and then I'm going to pull these little tabs out that I was telling you about earlier we're probably gonna pull the tabs out now and then lower the jack and then um, yeah you should be able to just see these bags just hanging dangling loose and then I have to remove the air lines that are connected to the bags and uh, yeah put the springs in so let's see how easy this next phase of it should be and here we go the two little clips, the clips from hell, uh, just got them loose. And I just used this little thing right here. And it's not that far in there. I mean, you could probably use like a coat hanger or I mean, 
pretty much anything else, any kind of long piece of metal to just go in there and like wiggle it around and push them out. So they're out, and now I'm about to lower the um, ramp, uh, not ramp, lower the jack, and my bags will be low, and then I'm gonna pull the bags off and show y'all how to do that and disconnect my uh, airlines and then put the springs in. So far, so good, not gonna move it. So this bag right here has air in it still. So this bag, when I lowered everything, it just went all the way down. But the other bag on the other side, if we go to that side of the car, you can see that that bag is just kind of hanging on by the actual... Uh... So this bag is only hanging on by the air lines at the moment. So if I pull the lines loose, which are this way, once I pull these lines off, it should release the air pressure and it's going to go or probably pop. I don't know what it's going to do. But um, yeah, so that bag will come loose in this bag. As you can see, can you see that? That is wobbly, yeah. It's just holding off dear life and connected to this other line. So I'm about to, I think this might be the compressor right here. Yeah, this might be the compressor. And uh, yeah, so, well, yeah, I'm going to disconnect this, basically. So let's see what happens. All right, the air lags are out. This is actually pretty darn easy to do. Not very difficult at all, as all the research on the interweb says, uh, the forms on the interweb, rather. But now I'm, uh, I'm gonna show you the difference between a good bag and a bad bag. So this bag right here is good, still holds air, all that kind of stuff. This is the bag that we suspected was bad, and it was bad because as you can see, it is fully compressed and uh, it had no air in it when I pulled it loose. And this one was still holding on for dear life, but uh, no longer need these. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some springs in. All right, airbags are now out. So here are the springs that I will be putting in. And I've seen other people do this uh, on YouTube before. And I, other guys that I've seen do this, they only use this top plastic isolator right here to insulate the spring, obviously, from the body of the vehicle or the chassis of the vehicle, rather. And I did not realize that the kit that I got, and it doesn't even show it on the handy dandy instructions, RTFM, that I just now saw <laughs> after going ahead and doing this job. Um, but it doesn't say that it had that it came with lower spring isolators. So I ordered this Metal Tech um, real, co real Coil Conversion Kit, which is pretty much these lower isolators right here. So if I hold this one up, this is what the Metal Tech uh, isolator does. It's a, or is rather, it's a little bit bigger and it gives more of a home for the bottom of the spring to sit versus these right here, which is just kind of a pad. Um, but I've seen so many people do this without actually using this right here or this because if you look over here, if you come a little bit closer, you can see where the bottom of the spring sits on the actual uh, axle. Now, I guess since I already have this Metal Tech kit, I'm going to go ahead and install it. It doesn't like it's going to be too difficult to install, but um, I'm really wondering if I really need it. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Do you think I really need this, needed this Metal Tech? Uh, kit or should I have just used these rubber pads and just thrown them on here like this and been good to go I don't know I have installed the metal tech uh, lower insulation cup and in, I guess like uh, coal retainer but now the issue is because I've added so much height to this versus just having this piece like most people have done uh, I have to uh, loosen up the sway bar so I can get this uh, axle down just a little bit more so I can go ahead and pop the spring right there on and the spring that's right there. <laughs> so I go ahead and pop this spring in. And uh, yeah, so it shouldn't be too bad. Just a 12 millimeter bolt and uh, I should be able to lower this uh, axe a little bit more and should be good to go. So here we go, gonna do that. All right, so now we are on the driver's side. Driver's side I'm going to install the second um, Metal Tech, uh, what is this thing called? Coal Retainment Kit Doohickey. And uh, it's not really easy to install, but it's not very difficult either because you gotta kinda just like get your finger under this uh, platform and uh, get this thing uh, screwed. And once you get the screws uh, started, you can use a 3 4 millimeter crescent wrench to hold the bottom and then you just torque the top and then the nylon um, nut just pretty much holds it in there pretty tight and once you get it as tight to uh, your spec then you can go ahead and um, pull, put your other spring coil on top of this perch 
and uh, then you can rest assured that your spring will never uh, just fly out of here or, or come loose while you're doing some crazy off-roading or fun driving or frisky frolicking driving. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do that now. back on uh, everything's tightened up and bolted up and torched to spec and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and lower this thing and we can get our first glimpse of how this thing is going to look on springs versus bags and then we gotta go inside and do some electrical stuff and one last little trick that I haven't seen anyone else do yet that I'm gonna go ahead and do as well so here we go lowering it All right, so now we're almost at the home stretch. We need to uh, pull two fuses so that we won't get any warning lights on the air compressor and the ride level uh, switch. As you can see, the truck is uh, sitting up a lot higher, but these springs need to settle. So it's gonna take like a couple of days of driving and then the springs will eventually settle in and then we'll have the true ride height. And then we can determine what we're gonna do in the front as far as raising the front, maybe just a little bit, maybe two inches or something like that. But we'll see, we'll cross that when we get to it. For now, let's get this electrical stuff sorted out and whatever else we need to do in the interior. So let's go. So we're gonna pull this one out. Oh. It's like pulling teeth. And then we're gonna pull. Ten. So that one's pulled out. The ten? Yeah. That what it says? Yep. So that's all we do under here, and then under the hood, one more left. So let's go into the hood. I mean, not the hood. <laughs> it's the cabin. I'm gonna count one, two, three over. So top row, one, two, three, which should be that. There we go. Now we need to go ahead and crank the car up and see if we get any warning lights. Hopefully not. So let's see what happens. Hey! No warning. All right, so the last thing we were gonna do is remove this switch right here since it is uh, irrelevant and does not uh, even do anything. We go ahead and pull this on out and disconnect it like so. So we're probably gonna go ahead and sell this on eBay. These things go for about $60, so yeah. That's that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, put the uh, other piece in here that's supposed to replace that so it's not just a hole there for no reason. Let me go get it real quick. All right, and here's a place, uh, no, place, the replacement piece right here, Lexus Genuine Toyota part that I ordered from eBay, and it's going to sit right down in there, and it's going to give you the ability to uh, not have a hole in the middle of your console. So this should just pop right into place. Uh, once I get this bag open, this is the strongest bag I've ever seen. All right. So, yeah, it has these little tabs in right here that keep it kind of in place. I think it goes this way. Well, maybe it goes the other way. Uh, nope, nope, hold up. Get this out of the way. Let's see. Let's go this way or that way. Well, I guess it goes that way. And there you go. So now you don't have that hole there anymore. Um, and you don't have that stupid, uh, unnecessarily and frivolous uh, switch right there. And you can have somewhere to sit your phone. Finish the uh, modification going from bags to springs or coils or whatever you want to call it. And now wow. Katia, who drives this car every single day, is driving. What do you think about the mod? It is a massive improvement because as the airbags were going out for last, what, a month probably? The car started being more wobbly and like kind of floating around and rocky. Uh -huh. Now, like, it's actually not only that it's higher but now it's actually driving really nice like a lot nicer than it was before i think better than stock i want to say yes because it's very like stable like very sturdy feeling like 
What do you think about the look? Oh, absolutely, because <laughs> it looked like we had a lowered GX before. <laughs> now we have like a proper normal car, because every time I would come out in the morning, it would get so low, and one side usually would lean more than the other, because the way the bags were going out, that it was funny. That thing not only was sideways, it's super low, now it's like properly normal. Nice. And all these parts we get on Amazon, well, all except for the this little cup holder thing, right? Not cup holder, but little storage pocket right there. That was the only thing I had to get off of eBay, and it was $13. The um, springs were about $117 from Amazon. I think the company was called like Unity or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then there was the uh, actual Metal Tech uh, conversion coil system, which is a little like a uh, puck that keeps the uh, coil in place so it can't like, you know, like flop off or something like that when you're doing some crazy stuff off road. And that was about $79, so roughly $80. So it wasn't too expensive of a mod. And now we never have to worry about those stupid airbags and that compressor just constantly running. And we're good to go now. And the ride is like actually really good. I haven't driven it yet, but just riding in the passenger seat, I definitely can tell it's a lot better than it was. Like, I'm very impressed because I got so used to it being like wobbly like this that now on the turns that it used to do that, I still expect it to do it and it doesn't do it anymore. <laughs> so I feel like I'm like, okay, I'm about to rock with it and it's not just, it's just it's normal. Yeah, it's yeah. very impressive. I actually did not realize it would be that much better of a ride. I thought it was just gonna be like, okay, it'll be normal, but this is better. And it took a little bit longer than an hour to uh, put these things in. It took me about three and a half hours to do it because when you put the metal tech stuff in there, you have to um, compensate for that extra distance that you have to sway the axle to be able to get the springs in. So I had to use a spring compressor on the driver's side and on the passenger side, Cat had to pretty much step on the uh, axle and like get it low enough so I could put the spring in. But now it's driving great. I can't wait to drive this thing and see how it feels. Now we're probably gonna actually, depending on how the springs settle, we might uh, actually lift the front up just a tad so the car looks like it's nice and flat. But other than that, we're good to go. So we are KRT Life, KRT Life with a Y. Like, subscribe, comment, all those beautiful things. We hope you enjoy this video. And I hope this video helps you, uh, I guess, make a uh, decision on what suspension parts to put on your GX because there's a lot of different kits out there that people look at and, you know, whichever, you know, pick your poison, I guess. I is gotta the say, thing. like, if it's gonna cost you only, like, about $200 and it proves quality of your ride that much, it's worth it. Definitely. We're out, y'all. Peace. Quick update. Uh, so I just finished driving the car on the older truck, the GX470 on the highway. And um, it is extremely smooth, smoother than I feel like it was before we put the bags on it. And um, one last thing, I've noticed that um, a lot of people with GXs have this issue where they feel like somebody's tapping them from behind every once in a while at red lights and just randomly. And since I've taken these bags off, I have, the car has not done that. So I suspect what was happening was as the bags were starting to leak and the, and the compressor would kick on and like, you know, raise the car back up, it would probably turn the uh, axle, the CV axle, because it's changing the angle of the suspension as it's lifting the car up. And I think that is what was causing that little bumping sound because now the truck's not doing it anymore. So if you're getting that bumping sound in your GX 470, you might want to check your airbags and change your airbags to springs and that bumping sound of bumping feeling might go away because it felt like you were just getting rear-ended, like uh -huh. tapped by another car. Then the first time it happened in this car, I actually thought somebody bumped into me. So yes, just wanted to add that to the video. Okay, now we're done.